So in this first video that you have to watch for homework, we're going to talk about working with the distributed property. And I know in class I said there's only one version of the distributed property, but because uh, subtraction is adding the opposite, you can write another version that has a subtraction inside. Just be very careful of which one you have, because if you have the addition one, then you have to make sure you put the plus sign in between. If you have the subtraction one, you make sure you put the minus sign in between. All right, so my suggestion to you is, as you are watching this video and I put an example up, you can pause right when I put the example up and try it on your own. And then um, after you finish it, you can unpause it and see if you get the correct solution. All right, so let's do a couple of examples and we'll start with the basic level example. So if you think you get it, try pausing after I write down this example. So simplify this completely, press pause, and when you're done, unpause to see if you get the right answer. All right, so I know the distributed property is kind of like sprinkling. So I want to sprinkle the two over everything inside the parentheses because the alternative is to, is to uh, uh, the alternative to combining the x and the one or whatever's in the parentheses, meaning the order of operations, is to just multiply everything inside the parentheses by what's outside. And so then I get a two x plus a two times one, and that's the distributed property. And then I can do the multiplication and I get 2x plus 2. Box it off, happy face. All right, that's basic level. So if you get the basic level, let's look at something a little more, a little more uh, fancy. I, I still consider this basic level, but I'm gonna use a subtraction now. All right, so once again, if you wanna try it on your own, pause it uh, now. All right, so same thing. I'm gonna multiply seven times three y and seven times two, but there's a subtraction there. So when I multiply seven times three y, I have to carry this operation of subtraction over and then do seven times two. So then seven times three is 21y minus seven times two, which is 14. So box it off, happy face. So now let's look at the kind of examples that over my past like 16 years of teaching, I've seen people make mistakes with. And it's sign mistakes. Because in algebra, it's not about understanding the concept. It's not just the concept. A lot of it is the fine detail work that you have to, to get. If you drop a sign someplace, your answer's wrong. So you have to be very careful and notice the details. All right, so negative two times the quantity of x plus seven. So if I want to distribute a negative two, I work it the exact same way. I multiply negative two times x and then negative two times seven. So negative two times x plus, the operation of plus, negative two times seven. This gives me negative two x plus negative 14. But remember, I don't like having those two signs together. That's not simplified. So then what I have to do, I have to use a definition of subtraction to combine that plus and negative into a minus. So I have negative 2x minus 14. All right, and that's how I distribute a negative. So why don't you try this next example uh, on your own by pausing after I write the example down. All right, so let's look at the example negative three times the quantity two x minus four. All right, so pause now if you wanna try it on your own. All right, so um, same deal. I'm gonna multiply the negative three times each of the terms. So I have a negative three times a two x. That is a subtraction, the operation carries over, and then a negative three times a four. And so then I have to do negative three times two to get negative six x minus negative three times four, which is negative 12. Now I don't like the minus and negative, so I'm gonna combine it into six x, negative six x plus 12. Box it off, happy face. Now I wanna look at what's going on with the signs because that's the number one missed thing, is messing up the signs. So if I distribute a positive number, the sign combination inside the parentheses is exactly the same as the answer. So it's like a, plot, a positive and a positive. So my answer is positive and positive. Here I'm distributing a positive seven over something that's positive and negative. So my answer is positive and negative. But the exact opposite happens when I distribute a negative. I should get the neg opposite signs. So I'm distributing a negative over something that's positive and positive. So to check my signs, I better get an answer that has a negative and a negative, and it does. And so here, same thing, I have a positive and a negative. So I double check to make sure I have the right sign combinations. Distributing a negative number, so the sign combo has to change. It was positive and negative, so now it's negative and positive. And that's how I distribute basic level distribution. So let's look at some examples that are not so basic. Um, things that people mess up with, um, I notice, and some things that are, are slightly more complicated. So the first one 
is this. It looks like I'm not distributing anything at all, but remember I told you that a mathematician is not going to write a 1 someplace they don't have to. So this is really negative 1, not just a negative sign. So this is indeed a distribution problem. I have to subtract, or I have to multiply negative 1 times m and negative 1 times 5. So I have negative 1 times m, that subtraction carries through the problem, negative 1 times 5. And so then I get a negative m minus negative 5. Simplify those signs together to get a negative m plus a 5. Box it off, happy face. Now when I described the distributed property to you in class, I told you that you can distribute over more than just two terms. And that's totally possible. Um, case in point, I have this thing. 5 times x squared plus 2x minus 4. So just because I have three things in there, it doesn't mean I do anything differently. I'm just going to multiply now three things. So I have 5 times x squared plus 5 times 2x minus 5 times 4. And then I simplify this, I get 5x squared plus 10x minus 20. And that's how I do it when I have more than two terms inside the parentheses. Everything gets multiplied. And that's the second most common thing, is forgetting to multiply one of these terms. And that's what I used to do. When I was in Algebra 1, I always forgot to multiply that last term by the, the number outside. Um, and so you just have to double check to make sure. And that's actually why I do the arrows, to make sure I multiply everything inside of there by the parentheses. And it's everything, I mean every term, everything separated by an addition or subtraction. Now I'm going to fancy this up slightly, because you're in Algebra 1 at Keeling. So we're going to talk about how to distribute a variable. All right, And it's no different. I'm going to multiply x times 2x and x times 5. I just have to be very careful with how I write my answer. So x times 2x is indeed just that, and x times 5 is that. But I don't like writing it so that the variable is in the middle or at the variables in the front. Remember, in these terms, I want the coefficient first and the variable in the end. So I'm going to use the uh, commutative property of multiplication to rearrange things. So I'm going to put the 2 in the front and put the x's in the back. And I'm going to put the 5 in the front and the x in the back. I also don't like x times x. Um, because I know that x times x is really x squared, so writing that base twice is not simplified. So I get 2x squared plus 5x, and I drop the dots at this point because it's understood that there's, it's just multiplication. And this is this thing simplified. And I'm going to do one more example, and only one more example. And in this example, um, I'm going to combine these two concepts, distributing a variable and having more than two things inside the parentheses. All right. And this is as fancy as we're going to get at this point in the year. So I have 3x times x squared minus 8x plus 2. All right, so this is a good time to pause to see if you understand these more complicated examples. So uh, let's, uh, if you paused it, just, you know, you'll see the answer in a second when you unpause. All right, so I'm going to distribute. And I get 3x times x squared minus 3x times 8x plus two, uh, 3x times 2. All right, that's a subtraction carried through, that addition carried through. And so I'm going to rearrange everything so that the numbers are in the front and the variables are in the back. So I have 3x times x squared minus 3 times 8 times x times x plus 3 times 2 times x. All right, and so once I have that, I'm going to start combining things. Well, I don't like x and x squared. That's really x cubed, because x squared is x times x, times another x gives me 3x cubed. And I don't like x times x. That's really x squared. And so I use the definition of exponents to rewrite those as a single base with an exponent. Now I'm going to go back and multiply and use my substitution. I get 3x cubed minus 24x squared plus 6x. And this is my final box it off happy face answer. And that's how we use the distributive property.